Hi, this is Alan Shea, and I'm here today with Our Society, and we're here with one of our own here in Altadena, Pasadena area, and she's going to share her new program and how she is inspired to share with the community. Hi, I'm Tanya Fairley, and we're here at the Women's City Club of Pasadena, and today's program is Fatherless Daughters, and what it is is for women with unavailable, unattached, or absent fathers, and hoping to bridge the gap between um, women and their relationships with fathers, and help them to overcome any barriers that they may have based on that relationship. What they get out of the program is love, acceptance, and forgiveness, and helps them to move on to a better tomorrow. Thank you guys again um, for coming. And I know that for a lot of you, this was a commitment. And I really do appreciate it. Um, it's not about the messenger, but about the message. And I hope that each and every one of you take something away from today. Um, the message is about love, acceptance, and forgiveness. And um, you will get a chance to learn a little bit more about me and my journey to, um, it's a journey to being. And what makes me a fatherless daughter? I know the title in the beginning was a little heavy for a lot of people. I got a lot of flack for this one. But I took it because it's not about making men appear to be no good and, and you know deadbeat dads, none, none of that. It's about helping women identify who they are through the journey with their fathers. Helping men understand how to relate to the women in their lives their daughters, their wives, their sisters, their mothers. So together we're gonna to take this journey. And feel free if you have any questions or anything. Um, as you notice, there is some tissue boxes on the table. <laughs> Please feel free to use them. So in the Fatherless Daughters Network, we define a fatherless daughter as a female who grew up with an unattached, unavailable, or absent dad. We all have biological fathers, because we wouldn't be here if we didn't, unless you visited that little bank thing, and then even then they're called donors, right? right. So <laughs> the term fatherless is used. is meant that the father figure is just not emotionally or physically present in the daughter's life. The effects, the effects of an absent, unattached, or unavailable father can have many negative consequences on a female's life as she approaches adolescence and adulthood. The impact of having a father not either physically present, mentally present, or, or all three. Girls who grew up without a father have little connection with their fathers, usually have difficulty sustaining healthy relationships with men. They tend to suffer from issues such as abandonment, low self-esteem, sexual promiscuity, trust, and they depict men in a certain way. What we have to understand is that girls get their identities from their fathers. And when that father bond is missing, or not there in a way that can impact you, it definitely makes a difference in you as a woman, how you grow up and who you become. When a girl's father makes it clear that she is loved unconditionally for who she is and that he approves of her, he begins to lay the foundation for her healthy sense of self-worth, self-love, self-value. This foundation will follow her into adulthood. If, however, the, the little girl does not have such a relationship with the father, if she sees rejection, emotional coldness, or withdrawal from him, her sense of self-worth will become tainted. And, you know, that part right there is very, very important to understand. We seek love. As women, we seek love. We seek emotional attachment. We seek the gentleness, the kindness, we seek love. And a lot of times what happens if you are a woman or female who's grown up without, you know, your father never gave you a hug. You become that person who doesn't hug. Or you can be the extreme opposite, that person who wants to hug everybody, because you're always seeking for it, right? So it's very important that we identify these things and identify who we are because of this, with this bond. If he is simply not available and doesn't provide her needs, her self-confidence becomes warped or non-existent. 
and she may find herself lacking love and feeling unsafe, insecure, and unwanted. There begins the making of a fatherless daughter. When you are a fatherless daughter, there is some social ills that come along with that. There are some statistics that are alarming for women who grow up without their father, unavailable, unattached father. And what we're trying to do is to kind of help bridge that gap, help you identify who you are in this process so that you don't get so far off that you can't be loved, that you can't get the, the affection and attention that you're looking for, but get it in the right way. And so that you do not become a statistic. Because before we go into this, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. I, according to statistics, should be swinging on a pole, mm -hmm. selling in my body. I should not be standing up here in front of you encouraging you to be a better you. Why, you may ask? Um, when I was young, I grew up in a foster home. I was raised by a very, very abusive woman who was my mother, my biological mother. I was molested at an early age. I was hungry, homeless, and left as if I was just nothing. And according to statistics, when those things happen to you at a very early age, you turn out to be absolutely nothing, right? People look at you that way. People look at you like, that's so-and-so's kid, she ain't gonna be nothing. She's not good for nothing but laying on her back. You guys can act like you've never heard that before, heard people say that, but when circumstances, when you are in circumstances that put you there, a lot of times you feel like there is no other way out. That's how we get statistics. Right? Because you fall into a trap. You fall into a way of living to survive. According to statistics, I shouldn't be happily married. According to statistics, I should have 10 kids. According to statistics, I should not own two businesses. But I decided early on, the hell with statistics, I was gonna be something for myself and make something of my family. According to statistics, Fatherless girls are eight times more likely to go to prison, five times more likely to commit suicide, 20 times more likely to have behavior problems, 32 times more likely to run away, 10 times more likely to, be, to abuse chemical substances, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, 33 times more likely to be seriously abused, 73 times more likely to be fatally abused, and on average have 45% higher mortality rate. And on average, fatherless daughters have 73% lower standard of living. So according to statistics, if we went by what statistics say about what we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to be, none of us should be in here, right? But think about what happens when you talk about these social ills eight times more likely to go to prison. Why is that? Why do you think that fatherless daughters are eight times more likely to go to prison? Anybody? There's no structure in the household. There's no structure in the household. No structure. There's no connection, no bond. Now, you guys are gonna be really surprised when we get through this to find out that you can have a daddy in the house doesn't mean that he's there. And so all those reasons why we are, we have unavailable, unattached, or absent fathers turn out to be a result of this. And these are true statistics. These facts were taken from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. This is not Tanya made up stuff, okay? <laughs> when I tell people my story, they look at me like, girl, are you still standing? Because according to society and the things that we know about society, when you've grown up with an alcohol um, abuse uh, family member, mother, father, when you've been homeless, when you've struggled, there shouldn't be any positive things in your life, right? You should be that gangbanger on the corner or that girl down the street selling her body. But there's something in us, there's something within all of us that says, no, I'm not gonna be that person. And mine's may not have come as early as some, but thank God it came, right? <laughs> Symptoms of a fatherless daughter. I 
can tell you that at some point in my life, I exhibited every single one of these statistics. And I stand before you to say it's okay. Because when you recognize what it is that's, that's going on with you, you have the power to change. Remember I said earlier, when you guys got the email about this, it's all about love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Love yourself for who you are, accept where you are with, through your process, and learn to forgive. Because had I not learned to forgive, rage and anger, I'd be that statistic of being in jail or committed suicide. Feelings of rejection and abandonment, I would not have the best husband in the whole wide world at this point. I'm just saying. Overdriven by success, well, we're working on that. We're not going to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> we have trust and commitment issues. How many ladies do you know? I ain't gonna even point you out. I'm gonna make you think about somebody else. Have trust and commitment issues. Can not keep a man, can not keep a friend, can not keep a job. Those are all trust and commitments, right? And a lot of times, because we haven't dealt with our stuff, right? We don't wanna deal with our stuff. We want somebody else, we wanna help everybody else deal with their own stuff, right? We gotta deal with our own stuff. Challenges with shame, sex, and intimacy. Well, have you ever been a child of abuse, sexual violation? You do have problems with sex and intimacy. Because now, is it because you're in love with this person that you're sharing yourself, or you feel obligated? So you gotta know those things. You have to understand why you're allowing this person to violate your body. Difficulties in sustaining healthy, intimate relationships. Well, it goes back to the same thing. According to statistics, Fatherless daughters can be um, promiscuous. According to statistics, I should be out there. Low self-image and self-esteem. Our young girls, if I have not seen anything in my 45 years on this earth, right now, our young girls are suffering from low self-esteem and low self-image. And we gotta do something about that. We gotta help them identify their stuff so that they don't become a statistic, so they can wanna do better for themselves, so they can make a positive impact in their communities. But if we as women, young adults, don't do it for ourselves, we can't help nobody else. We can surface help people, right? Because it's easier to deal with somebody else's stuff than to deal with our own, right? Because I was a blamer. I would blame somebody in a minute. Oh, I didn't get that promotion because he don't like me. Well, I didn't get that because of this. But there was a point in my life that I had to stop. And I had to take a look at myself and say, Tanya, you are not all that in a bag of chips. But if you deal with this thing, you can be. And many people that know me now, I don't walk around cocky, confident, but I will let you know I'm not afraid because I dealt with my stuff. And I'm not afraid to tell people that I had to look in the mirror and deal with my stuff. That I had to look in the mirror and say to myself, why am I rejecting a man who has pledged his love to me? What is going on with me that I'm, I'm, I'm pulling myself back? Because it's not him. And you gotta be honest. Because according to statistics, this is the, these are the signs. These are the signs. Rage and anger, psh, I got kicked out of high school so much it wasn't even funny. I would fight anything and anybody that had anything. To, my mama's covering her head over there. But I would fight anything and anybody, especially if you mess with my sister, my brother, or my mama. But you know what, those fights weren't mine. But I took them upon myself. Because I was so angry, I was so mad, and I wanted to blame. Yeah, at that point, I shouldn't have been in the situation that I was in. But even through the situation that I was in, God saw fit to bring someone into my life that was going to take care of me, accept me as their own. We walked down the street with my mom and my sister, and people be like, girl, you look just like your mama. They know that's my foster mom for 33 years, but yeah, I look just like her, act like her too. But I had to address it. I had to address rage and anger so that I can accept the love. I had to address it. I had to address the feelings of rejection and abandonment. 
Because for me, if your own biological mother don't want you, how could somebody else want you? What? If my own mother and father could not stay around for me, how could anybody else be there for me? What's wrong with this world? You guys talking about your aunties love you and this person love you and nobody was there for me? So guess what? I wouldn't give my heart to nobody. Why? Because I didn't deal with my stuff. I'm telling y'all, when y'all get through out here, I'll be like, okay, we're going to deal with some stuff. <laughs> so, what does a girl need? I do a, um, a workshop called What a Girl Wants, What a Girl Needs. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's, when I tell you, you talk about what a girl wants, what a girl needs, and we're talking about men. We're talking about love from a man. We're talking about you young men right here who might want to get a girlfriend. Right here, we're about to hook you up. <laughs> Four primary essential needs a girl must receive from her father. One, his provision. Why do we need his provision? Yes. I believe it has to do with her self-worth that he sees that she has basic needs and he loves her to provide for her. Yeah. Just the basic things. Just it's not rocket science, right? But I'm gonna tell you what happens a lot of times with our young men, our men, and our young women. See, ladies, we're guilty. Those of you who have children. Those of you who got um, my baby daddy issues. See, we're guilty. We put this wedge in between men and their children because he don't wanna be with me, or he didn't say what I wanted him to say, or he didn't come over when he said he was gonna come over. So what happens, we start to taint. We start to put a wedge and not allow this man to provide what he can provide at that moment in his life for his child. And if it's a girl, we're doing more damage than anything. With today, how society is right now, they're killing our men off like there ain't nothing, like there's no tomorrow. For every man they kill, I always wonder how many daughters does he have in his life? How many women are in his life? Because they've just become a, a statistic. We have to do something about it. And it starts with us, it really does. We can blame that man all we want to, but it does, it starts with us. His protection. Protection. We just wanna feel like we're safe, right? As a girl, growing up, my dad, let me tell you how I knew I was safe. Let a boy walk in my door with a baseball hat on. <laughs> Daddy cocking the gun, making him walk back out the door and try it again. Now for me, that's what I knew. But for another young lady, it's she's gonna fall down, her daddy's gonna be there to pick her up. They just wanna feel, we just wanna feel like you got our back. That our daddy is our, you know, that's our that's our rock. His presence. It goes back to us, ladies. A lot of times his presence isn't there because of the things that we've done, how we've alienated him. Got real quiet on that part, huh? Everybody's putting their head down. His praise. What does girls want to hear from their daddy? Good job. Good job. What else do we want to hear? What do we want to hear from a man? You're beautiful. Yeah! I just walked into my house and I was like, look at this. <laughs> what, what, what? Look at this. <laughs> you look like, oh, move word for your vocabulary. Beautiful. There you go. Beautiful. We want to feel like we are the most important person in their eye. I got some friends in this room who are daddy's girls who can tell you how well put their father was when it came to emotional connection with them. Showering them with the emotions, how much they love them, how much he loves them and adores them. But I didn't have that. And according to statistics, because I was missing that, I shouldn't be standing here in front of you. But we have a choice. We make a choice. And we have a choice to understand that some of these things are missing and work on them for ourselves or keep them as a crutch. And if anybody knows me, one thing you know about me is I don't allow much to keep me down. Never have, 
never will, and I'm raising three children to follow in my footsteps. Now, before y'all shoot me, the ones that you know are workaholics and all that, I'm working on that. I'm trying to tell them that, you know, at my ripe old age of almost 45, you don't have to have 10 jobs. I'm learning that. I'm down to three. So just give me a little bit. But the relationship between a, a girl and her father, a woman and her man, are so important. But we gotta deal with some stuff. And unless we deal with some stuff, you're gonna keep alienating them. Talk about it, we receive our identity through our fraternal relationships and connections. What's more, when this neglects to happen in a female's life, we spend our entire lives trying to discover ourselves and search for love through paths that do not serve us. Yet our pain will never heal until we heal our misplaced self identity. See, it doesn't matter what your relationship is with your father, whether you had a good one or a bad one or a sometimey one, whether you had one that didn't start until late in life, you have to decide for yourself that you want to be a better person. And holding on to anger and rage is not going to help you. It's not going to do anything for you, and it's not going to do anything for the people around you. And what I've learned through my journey, um, I met my biological father when I was 23. By then, I was married on my second kid, on the separation, working like a dog, not really knowing what it was that I wanted out of life, even at that time. Because you know we think we grown at 23, right? Think you got it all figured out. I, I thought I was grown at 19, at 17. I moved out when I was 17. My mom cried, my daddy said bye. Like, it was just one of those things, right? Um, and I know some of you guys are wondering, she keep talking about her mother. I was in a foster home. And when I got placed in the foster home, the moment I got placed in that foster home, I knew that I was where I was supposed to be. Because my foster mom, she, the only time you ever hear me refer to her as my foster mom is in this setting. Ever. No one is allowed to refer to her as my foster mom. Because that's my mother. She has raised me for 33 years. She has taken care of me and guided me for 33 years. And I tell you, if it wasn't with, for her and her love and her support, I'd be a statistic. Because according to statistics, I'm not supposed to be loved either. Damn statistics, right? <laughs> but when I tell you, we're talking about healing pain and heal our misplaced sense of identity, we got to know who we are. And we got to know whose we are. And it's never too late to discover that. It's not too late to discover that. And if you have daddy issues of whatever sort, you have to acknowledge them. You gotta be in a place where you say, you know what, this has happened, life goes on, I'm ready to accept it, I'm gonna forgive him, and I need to move on. Not move on past him being your father, whatever role he plays, but move on from him holding you back. Move on from him, from his life, overshadowing the things that you want to do. Because that's what happens when we, never, when we don't heal our misplaced sense of identity, we're searching, we're placing our identity in somebody else. It kills me when we, my husband and I go somewhere, this is Lamont's wife. Excuse me, my name is Tanya, I worked hard for this identity. <laughs> right? When you've shaped yourself, and you've gotten yourself to a place where you're okay with who you are and whose you are, it makes a difference. The healing process can now begin. Because of misplaced sense of identity, we begin to have feelings of rejection, feelings of, and of, of unworthiness. Many fatherless daughters start to view themselves inaccurately. We begin to hold a self-image that makes us believe that we are somehow unloved and unlovable. And that self-image controls everything we think, say, or do. Our lives will never be different from what our self-image says we are. See, people have my life pegged. They did. I wasn't going to be nothing.
am just so proud that you brought this here for the viewers to see for themselves how empowering it can be to overcome and to have a real sense of forgiveness yes. about their past. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. it was, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey, and I look forward to speaking to you guys again. Well, thank you very much. We have someone who came all the way from Ireland, Jenny Bell. Why don't you share with us how your flight and then what did you think of today's uh, presentation wow. so far? Well, I landed from a 10 hour flight yesterday and I decided I'm going to jet leap instead of jet lag. Okay. Yeah, so I'm leaping. Oh, I'm not leaping. lagging, okay. I'm leaping. All right, I like that. Moving forward. That's it. Yeah, what I, what I think of now is just I'm noticing. That's what I. That's what I think this has done for me is that I'm recognizing different areas where I need to lift the limits off, you know, and and just let this flow come again so that I can be what my earthly dad wanted me to be and what my heavenly dad wants me to be. You know. Tonight, why don't you share with the viewers what did you think about to, tonight's I'm show so it. far? I am elated. Um, the information that's included. It's so inclusive, it's so warm, and who would know that Tanya went through all this before she became who she is? We have Christine with us today, and, and what did you think of the of the show so far? I, I really liked what she had to say. It's really true. Um, you can have a father present, but yet they're emotionally and mentally not available to you, and um, that can impact impacted my life in a negative way. Um, I think a lot of women need to hear this information um, it's it's just important especially now in our world it's there's so much busyness it's hard for families to stay connected and I think this is awesome if you get a hold of Tanya um, Farley's um, information for seminar you can also go to fatherlessdaughters.net um, look up that information um, if you have a friend you know struggles with fatherlessness or um, symptoms of fatherlessness, you know, um, let her know how much you care about her and that there's help out there. I just think that um, coming to something like this or reading a book about it or, um, you know, educating yourself on the symptoms of fatherlessness, even if you think you don't have them, even if you had a dad in the house, um, doesn't hurt you. I think just talking to your neighbors um, talk about it. Wow. Talk, 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 talk. I think that's reaching out is the most important thing. Wow. Well, yeah. that's, well, that's good. Well, I think that's a good way to end it tonight. We're going to talk about it and hopefully really get everybody involved with being open about this.